Hello, welcome to Joe's Custom Airsoft. We have a new gun to look at today. Um, I wanted to do a video about this gun uh, quite a while ago. I've been meaning to make a video on this for a short while, but because of the crazy situation with coronavirus, uh, I simply didn't have time until now. Although, from today it seems everything's on lockdown, so what better time to make an airsoft video than when you're stuck at home. Um, I want to jump right into this and talk about it while it's out of the box. Um, if anyone's an OG Airsofter like me, uh, immediately just click on this video, you'll know exactly what this gun is. But if you're not an OG Airsofter, if you're new to Airsoft, or maybe you've only been playing for a couple of years, this may be new to you, but I think it will definitely be interesting to you. This is a pretty interesting gun. So what do we have here? This is the Double Bell. Car 98K. This is a replica of the um, Mauser Car 98 rifle, famously used by the Germans in World War II. This particular version, uh, as the buck says, is the 101A. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is be between each one of these version numbers are. I know that there, there is a plastic and metal version, a wood and metal version. These are both spring guns, by the way. And I'm pretty sure there's a CO2 and a green gas version. So I'm guessing that's what these um, these kind of model numbers correlate to here. This is the 101A, according to the box, which is the full metal and full wood version of the gun. Very briefly, we'll talk about the packaging. It's a very, very basic cardboard box, unimpressive. It was damaged upon shipping, and we'll open it up and we'll take a look in the box to see how protected the gun is inside, but kind of unimpressive. It's not the most um, well-built cardboard box. It's not very protective, I guess. Um, some interesting notes on the box here. Um, it says, so you've got, apparently we've got a precision um, gun tube, 6.02 millimeters. I guess that's the inner barrel. Nickel plated steam Jane. If anyone has any idea what that is, please let me know. And uh, what else? Japanese rubber piston, okay. Series 201 is available for CO2 and ET1000. I'm guessing that's green gas. Okay, so yeah, there is a, a CO2 version and a green gas version of this gun. And Korean spring steel wire, okay. Interesting, so let's take the cover off. And here we have the gun inside. Obviously, anyone familiar with the Car 98 from video games or movies or history will recognize this gun. Uh, this isn't very well packaged at all, unfortunately. You don't have any foam inserts in this box. It's literally like a cardboard sheet that's been folded over, which accommodates the rifle. Um, and the gun itself is held in place with these cable ties. If you can see that there, not the most protective method of uh, packaging it does come with a did come with a bag of silica gel which somehow on my gun uh, exploded in the packaging so when I received this the whole gun the everything was just covered in silica balls which I had to clean out which was annoying but there you go the rifle doesn't come with very many accessories um, we do have a very basic instruction manual Shows you some descriptions of the parts on the front on that diagram. I haven't really looked at this to be honest. Yeah, shows you how like take out the bolt, magazine, floor plate, and all that stuff. Um, we have five dummy shells um, on a stripper clip. I bought this stripper clip separately. This gun doesn't include a stripper clip uh, at the box. We'll talk about these in a bit. For those of you who aren't in the know on this gun. And then finally, we have this beauty, the Car 98 itself. So let's get this cardboard box out of the way and uh, put this on the deck. Okay, so, double bell, Car 98K. Um, so for those who, who obviously know this and those who don't, this is the D-Boys bolt action, shell ejecting, Car 98 replica. Um, 
from what I've heard, I don't, I don't know if this is gospel, but I, I read somewhere that Double Bell had purchased D-Boys. Um, now, many years ago, I mean, I've been playing Airsoft for three, 13 years now. Uh, many years ago, you could get this rifle, and this was the shell ejecting Car 98, which everyone wanted. It was like a gimmick gun, really. It was more of a wall hanger uh, than a functional Airsoft gun, but it was pretty cool. Um, and everyone wanted it, and it was out for a while. And then they seemed to, D-Boy seemed to start making this. For years you couldn't get hold of these. Now about four or five years ago I did manage to buy um, a used D-Boy's Car 98 off uh, someone on the internet. Uh, so that was in my collection for a short period. Then a friend of mine who's more into classic um, like World War II era guns was like desperate to get this thing off my hands. He wanted to buy it. So I sold it to him for what I paid. And... I didn't have the Car 98 anymore. Now, over the years, I've been keeping an eye out on like pre-fired and other used airsoft sales forums and websites, and these really don't crop up anymore. You'll still see them listed on websites for sale, the D-Boys ones, but they're they're never in stock. I guess they were discontinued or something. It just became impossible to get these. Until recently, this year, um, browsing Taiwan gun, I happened to, to notice in the sniper rifle section, they had, uh, and actually they put a Facebook po uh, post out first, that's how I found out about this. So they put out a Facebook post with the um, plastic version of this, and uh, went on the website, this was probably the day that they put these out, and they also have, they also had the wooden one um, on the double bow. Now, this is literally the same gun. It is a D-Boys Car 98 just in a different brand. Perhaps the packaging was different on the D-Boys, but the gun itself is the exact same thing. Whether it's been manufactured by a different place now, I don't know, but it's the same gun. So these are now available again to buy brand new. Um, so far, Taiwan Gun's the only place I've seen it for sale. As I mentioned, they do the wood, which is this version here, and also the plastic stock version for a bit less, both spring guns. I don't know if they sell the gas powered ones. I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, you can now get these. And if I remember correctly, this wooden one was about 125 pounds before shipping. So let's uh, take a brief overview of the features of uh, this rifle. As I mentioned, we have full metal construction and the stock components are full wood. This is nice solid, hefty, nice feeling uh, rifle. Um, it is bolt action and it holds five of these dummy cartridges. Now how these work is you can should be able to see on the camera there that these are hollow all the way through and you put a BB in the end of these things, there's a little rubber o-ring inside to keep it tight. You load these into the internal magazine like you would a real rifle and then you've got five BBs and you shoot the shot and every time you cycle the bolt it ejects these dummy cartridges which is pretty damn cool this is why this was a very popular uh, gun um, obviously not really good for skirmishing I mean pff, you've only got five shots and well look how easy it would be to, to lose these if you play in an outdoor environment but it's kind of a novelty gun a bit of a collector's thing kind of a wall hanger and that's why I bought this I remember actually really enjoying uh, owning the D-Boys one and um, when I saw this it was an opportunity to add the Car 98 back into my collection um, so I guess um, we'll uh, take a close-up look at some of the features of this thing first okay so let's take a closer look at the features of this gun and also the construction I brought out my trusty little magnet tool here and uh, let's start off at the back. So we do have a metal uh, butt plate, which is not steel on this gun. Obviously we have a, this is a genuine wooden stock, real wood. We have um, this slot here, which I believe is used to um, retain a pin, which is used in the dis disassembly of the rail gun. Um, so it can kind of go into this hole, if you can see that there, and it stays in there and doesn't get lost. Uh, this is also a nut steel. We do have a 
cut out here for a sling. Metal trigger, trigger guard. Again, not steel. This is our metal magazine floor plate, which is steel. And uh, this is actually removable. You can remove the internal magazine and the spring. Uh, I think you just remove, you have to depress this, this plunger in this hole. And I, I think it either slides backwards or maybe to the side and the whole thing with the spring comes out, which is pretty cool. It's nice that you can take that apart like the real gun. Next, we have our bolt, obviously, this, which isn't steel. I don't know if this is some kind of aluminium or stainless steel or something. Um, kind of like the real thing. You can cut the bolt, is bolt action. You do have an internal magazine follower there, uh, which holds the five uh, dummy shells, which I'll show you in a bit. And uh, this is, the actual action of this is cocked when the bolt moves forward like so. And then obviously pull the trigger to fire. On the back of the bolt assembly, we have our safety mechanism. Again, none of this is steel. Or maybe, maybe there's steel inside of there. I'm getting some kind of, some attraction there. This on the back, this kind of plunger, I guess would be the, um, firing pin or whatever is still um, but yeah this is the safe this lever here when it's to the left hand side of the gun it's uh, unsafe flip that over to the right and it's now safe you can still pull the trigger but you can't cock the bolt anymore it's impossible to actually lift that up to disengage the safety uh, which took me a while to figure out actually you actually push this lever forward again and then it flips over to the left side and the gun is now no longer safe flipping over to the side we have this bar or lever which is steel and this is the uh, lever used to remove the bolt from the gun which I'll demonstrate now so you just pull the bolt back into the rearward position pull this lever to the side and then the whole bolt comes out like so and a brief look at the bolt through this slot you can see the inner workings uh, the spring and the piston in there Obviously this is dis disassemblable. I don't know how, I haven't looked into it yet, but you can obviously put a stronger spring in this if you want up the power. And uh, on the front of the bolt face, uh, instead of a firing pin, we have the nozzle, I guess. And there is also a functioning extractor, which uh, is used with the dummy rounds, which is pretty cool. And then we can just reinsert the bolt like so. This is always a little bit tricky. Find pulling the trigger helps like this, and then uh, it goes back forward. Obviously, when you do this, uh, unless you're pulling the trigger while moving the bolt forward, you are cocking the gun, so just be aware that um, it is cocked when this takes place. Let's move over a little bit. This, um, I guess, trunnion and barrel assembly here, nut steel, again, metal though, maybe zinc or possibly aluminium. We have a rear ladder sight, which is adjustable. This has markings up to, uh, from one to 18, I'm guessing this is in yards or meters maybe. So 100 to 1,800 yards or meters. And believe beneath the sight, I don't know if you can see there, but you do have a small grub screw and that's actually your hop up adjustment. So to adjust the hop up on this weapon, you just turn this, uh, this grub screw right here, which, um, isn't so quick as you need a tool, but at the same time, at least you don't have to remove the bolt or anything to get to it. So it's not all that bad. And on the left side of that, we have a scope mount rail. Now you can buy airsoft reproduction scopes for this gun, although I don't know how much they are. Most likely expensive, and I don't know what brands um, are out there, but I have seen them for sale. Uh, so obviously this mounts here and this interestingly is our only serial number or marking other than the sight numbers on the gun so we do have a little serial number here on the side which is uh, nice I think most of the serial numbers on these real rifles are up here somewhere but we, we don't get any anything no markings up, up there uh, I should also point out that um, the gun metal is in like a black painted finish and the, the bolt is probably some kind of stainless steel or aluminium. It's got a polished 
finished. And moving towards the front of the gun, we have our first barrel band here, which has a integrated sling loop, which is sadly not made of steel. Obviously a barrel, which isn't steel. And then we do have the next um, barrel uh, loop, loop here with a bayonet mount and a dummy cleaning rod. Now unfortunately this is all kind of cast as one part, the, the cleaning rod isn't um, removable, it's part of this here, so it, it doesn't actually function. And then at the very front of the gun we have a hooded front sight. One thing to note on this uh, rifle, I've seen it's quite common, which I've, I've actually fixed here, is this uh, f this front, this rear, sorry, uh, barrel band can be loose. It was on mine when I took it out of the box. And this is what retains this upper hangar piece. You can see there's a bit of movement there, not too much. Well, when this was loose, this could actually just fall straight off the gun. So that's the only really bad point I've seen with this, um, this rifle here, is that this is very easily this can easily just fall off if this is loose. Now what I did on this is remove this loop and put some tape under there and then reassemble it so this, this now can't move, it's solid and because this can't go forward, this can't fall off. So if you if you buy one of these, be prepared to do a kind of bit of quick, um, a bit of quick kind of DIY fix on it. Other than that, I have no other real problems. Um, if you want to take this off, by the way, you need to what do you need to do here? Okay, yeah, so you've got this um, this pin. I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a pin on this um, front barrel band. You depress that, which depresses this spring. This slides off the end of the gun. This spring also slides off, and this will allow you to slide off this loop here. And then we want to put it back together. You put this one first, followed by this uh, spring plate. You put the pin uh, in that, and then this slides over it, and it's retained all by this pin at the front. Um, it's not very difficult to do, but this pin is very small and can easily fall out So if you do take this apart, be careful not to lose it because this won't be able to stay on anymore So now we've got an overview out of the way. I know what you want to see Let's put the dummy rounds in this thing and uh, Show the main feature of this gun, which is the shell ejection so, Okay, so let's take a look at the main feature of this thing the shell ejection a famous shell ejecting D-Boys Double bell K98. Um, unfortunately, this rifle is pretty long, and I can't quite get it all in frame. So please excuse the kind of clipped gun. But all the interesting stuff is happening right here in the middle. So, so what do we need? First of all, obviously, uh, five rounds. Now, as I mentioned already, they don't come with this stripper clip, and you, I bought this separately, and you can easily buy these. Um, they're plentiful online, they're pretty cheap. And you can also buy spare shells online as well, and they're not very expensive. But uh, the magazine holds just five rounds, and this is what we got here. Now, it's really not possible or easy to load this from the stripper clip. We'll give it a try, but every time I've tried, I've failed, so I just load them by hand. But uh, first thing, obviously, we need to open up the bolt, and this reveals the magazine while within and there is here a slat out for your uh, shriver clip which believe it or not these don't actually fit oh no they do fit in okay so it does fit in you can hold the stripper clip in there and I guess you're supposed to just push down on these ah look at that first go so you just push down they go in perhaps this one isn't as tight as the others and uh, we're done with that and to chamber the first round obviously you just push the bolt forward and we have a round in place. Now, don't worry, there aren't any BBs in any of these shells. I'm just going to demonstrate this so you can see what the bolt action feature looks like. So, first round. There's a bit of a trick to uh, getting these to eject properly. You kind of don't want to be too rough on the bolt. If you just let the bolt kind of do the work and be gentle, each round will come out pretty nicely. Like so. It comes out pretty cool there. It just flies out. Second round. I should mention that this is a double stat magazine, which is pretty awesome as well in an airsoft gun and it works pretty much just like the real thing third round fourth round that was a bit weak last round 
there we go. So let's pick these all back up and have a go at feeding these by hand this time instead of on the stripper clip. Okay, so I picked all the shells back up. Be warned, some of these do fly pretty far. They, they go about three or four feet, some of these, and like to fly under furniture and stuff. So you can see why this is really, really quite impractical for actual airsoft skirmishing, but it's just pretty fun and it's just a pretty cool thing to have just to pull that ball back and watch the, the shells fly out there. So, um, as I mentioned, this is a double stack magazine, so let's feed these by hand. It's pretty quick and easy to do, to be honest. It's very satisfying as well. And last round. Okay, let's go back to it again. And that's it, all five rounds. So it's pretty cool how this thing actually does extract and eject shells like the real gun. It's 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 so cool and, and, and so satisfying. Um, if you're going to do this a lot, prepare to buy some extra shells because it's going to be pretty easy to lose these. These do fly pretty far and they're, they're kind of small and they get into small crevices and stuff. Okay, so I've got my makeshift chrono set up with the chronograph in the mole pouch used as a BB stop. Um, I just want to quickly show you how the BBs feed into these shells. So if the camera will focus, we have this is our shell in the front here is the hole where the BB goes. And there's an O-ring in there which kind of keeps it tight. So I'm just going to quickly show you. It's kind of difficult to do. The BB just kind of goes in the end like that and it just sits there and doesn't fall out and the back of this there's another opening with another o-ring which you can see and the nozzle which is on the end of the the bolt sits in there and then you've got a that kind of it's an air seal in here now so that's how it fires but um, I loaded up five of these so let's uh, put it in the gun put these rounds in the gun and um, give it a test Okay, so I've got my five rounds all loaded up and ready to go. And I'm going to try actually loading this via the stripper clip again because that's pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty nice getting those all in one. Not quite as smooth if you heard that, but they're all in. First round, let's go. Okay, first round, here we go. 370 FPS, second shell, 366, third round, 345, we have had a bit of a misfeed there, next round, 361 back up, fifth and last round, 373. So looks like this thing roughly around the 360 and 370 FPS mark. Um, I mean this is just over AEG power so I guess it's not too bad. I mean you're not going to be skirmishing with this thing let's just get that out of there. So if you're going to use this for plinking or something I guess 370, 360 isn't too bad although you could put a heavier spring in and probably put a scope on it and then I don't know, maybe you get 450 to 500, but it seemed re relatively consistent. Um, that one round was low there at 340 yard, but the rest were up there around 360, 370, so pretty much not bad. Okay, now the chrono's out of the way, let's go and do a summary on the Double Bell Car 98. Okay, so let's do a little summary on the Double Bell Car 98K. I really love these guns. Uh, when I first saw this, and this is when I've kind of 
started out in airsoft. I was like a young teenager. I really wanted to, really wanted one. I always wanted to get my hands on one. That ball action feature was just so cool, um, and it was kind of a shame that it was so hard to get one. And now you can. So I'm really happy I've got this. Um, obviously, this this ball action feature is just so so damn cool. Uh, it really, really is fun and uh, authentic feeling. Any downsides? Okay, there are a few downsides to this gu this gun. So let's get those out of the way. First of all, most obviously, this is completely impractical to use as a skirmishing weapon. Not only do you just have a five-round magazine capacity, uh, it's very easy to lose those mag uh, those uh, shells. Um, they don't always feed the best, so you can have like loading issues. It takes a while to reload them, it takes a while to reload the BBs into the shells. So this really is, is useless as an airsoft gun. Um, if you are a skirmisher and you're looking to do some reenactment or you're looking for a World War II weapon to use uh, in airsoft, don't get this for skirmishing because it'll just be frustrating. Like It'll cost you a fortune buying new shells, losing them all the time. You'll probably be frustrated with the gun itself. The other downside is there really is a lack of steel on this gun. I don't know whether the original D-Boys guns were steel, although this double bell version, whether it's made in the same factory or not, um, really has a little steel on it. Although it's it's got a good weight, it's a very sturdy feeling gun, the wood's really nice, it's got a, a pretty good kind of rugged finish to it. It looks it looks like a it looks like a, almost like a real rifle to be honest. Um, the, the lack of steel is a bit disappointing. Now as this isn't really a skirmishing weapon, is it too big of a deal? Probably not. But uh, I can see things getting broken easily, especially things like this little like cleaning rod here. This is already pretty pretty loose and flexible as it is. Some of the components on the safety are pretty pretty wobbly as well, um, which is I mean I guess they're not going to just fall off, but it doesn't feel the strongest airsoft gun. But if you're not skirmishing this thing, then does, does it really matter? I guess not. And another downside, I guess, is a lack of markings on this weapon. Other than this serial number on the um, scope rail, there are no serial numbers on this. So that would have been nice just to have a few more like markings up here or wherever they're supposed to go. A few positives about this gun, obviously. It's pretty authentic. It looks like a, the real thing. It operates like the real thing. Um, you can obviously the bolt action and the shell ejecting, you can feed it from stripper clips. It's just pretty cool. So maybe if you're just into reenactment, this would be an option for you. Really, this is more of a gun to put in the collection or to actually hang on the wall. The only reason I really bought this is because I think it's cool and I want to add it to my collection. And that's probably why you should buy it as well. Um, obviously, it's easy to get hold of spare shells. You can get stripper clips for it. You know, there are accessories for this thing. Obviously, you can get slings for this. Uh, imagine you can get a bayonet, maybe a replica, or possibly even fit a genuine one. Whether you can get that, I don't know. You can fit a scope on there as well if you wanted to. Uh, so, as a collector's kind of item, this is pretty good. And it's a cheap gun for that, at like £125 or whatever it was. You know, it's 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 not a lot of money to, to spend on something cool, you know. Especially if you're into classic airsoft stuff. I think this is definitely a good uh, gun to add to the, the collection. So, uh, obviously for just a bit of a, a novelty gun, there's not much else to say about the Double Bell Car 98, but it, uh, it is a pretty cool um, classic airsoft gun, and I really like it a lot, and I'm glad to once again have my hands on one in my possession that I don't plan on giving up. So, I think that about does it for this video. Um, again, if you enjoyed it, Please like, subscribe, uh, comment. Um, I know I've only got a handful of videos out at the moment, but I'm hoping people like my content and will uh, flock to them. I do have some more content to come up. The next gun is another World War II gun, somewhat related to this. Um, that's all I'm going to say for now, so if you're interested in that uh, classic airsoft guns or you just like my videos, um, yeah, keep an eye out for that video and that, that should be coming up soon. So. Once again, thanks for watching, and uh, you'll see me in the next one.